السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Indeed, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask him to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah bless them all and may he bless every one of you. And may he bless every one of humanity as well and may he grant us all goodness and ease. My brothers and sisters, my children, sons and daughters, I'm very, very happy to be here this morning. You can see the broad smile from the time I walked in. It reminds me of my days at school. And I recall so many things as I stand here in front of you, seeing, mashallah, it looks like the school is quite disciplined. It looks like people are following rules and regulations, mashallah, I hope so. It looks like, alhamdulillah, there, there is a lot of achievement. The standard of the recitation I heard in front of me this morning was very high. Alhamdulillah, shukran, may Allah grant you acceptance and may Allah make the school uh, even greater. The MC that we have, mashallah, also of good quality. What do you expect? Indian after all, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the school goodness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. I wish to share with you a few things. You see, in life, I have seen a lot and I'm sure you've heard from so many different people. We've taken guidance from the one who made us. Because ultimately, he who made us is the only one who knows why he made us. So for us to be able to know, we need to go back to He who made us and look at what He sent us. It is important to ask questions and keep on asking questions, no matter how silly those questions are, until you get an answer that you feel is correct and it makes sense. Make sense to the clean mind, which would mean if your mind is contaminated with the dirt of what is around you, you may not be able to understand what is clean and what is dirty. For example, a person who looks with glasses that have a yellow tint will see everything in a different color because of the tint. So we need to remove the glasses and start asking questions and see life for what it actually is. And one of the best ways of looking at life, and I know it might sound like I'm dooming or I'm saying something that might be sad, but is actually asking yourself, why do people die? And when they die, where do they go? That's a very, very important question. That would help you answer why you are here in the first place. Because I have now understood, now that I am much older, when I was your age, I used to think life is all about partying, having fun, and having a group of friends, and going out, and doing this, and doing that. Although I was restricted very, very much by my own parents and the strictness of society at the time from doing what I may have desired, and I'm fortunate that that did happen because sitting here today, had I just followed my whims and fancies, I don't even think I would be standing in front of you today. So if I did whatever I thought, and whatever was on TV at the time, I wouldn't actually be on TV today. Allahu Akbar. I would still be watching. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. I hope you get the difference. One is people who watch others living. And what we want is to live our real life, not just watch others living. So this is why it's important to be original, be yourself, understand, do not allow contamination from the surroundings that may sometimes not be positive. If you take a look at television today, you know, we were much more fortunate, although it was always considered something that would uh, lead you away from morality, perhaps from uh, goodness, perhaps as time has progressed, it's becoming worse. You know, I know of Christians who tell you music is prohibited and you shouldn't listen to it because of how dirty it's become. And what Islam does, it does you a favor by closing a door that leads to that which is wrong. So the door is closed. Someone might ask, but what's wrong? Okay, you might not know what's wrong, but if you open the door, you will get to a stage when you would have slipped so badly and broken your bones, it will take a long time to resuscitate you. And this is why Islam says, close the door. Allahu Akbar. You know, it's called saddu dhara'ah, to close what leads to something wrong. And if you take a look today at people who follow any faith that has in it morality and conduct, they will find fault or they will tell you that it's wrong to dress in a specific way if that way is not moral if it is revealing so much 
that it causes an issue. I know there is freedom on the globe, but who would agree to walk around naked? No one. There will come a time when part of the world will tell you it's your right and you can do so. And then your children will walk around totally stark naked, totally naked, and they will tell you, do you know what? What's wrong? It's my choice. I can dress as I want. Fair enough, all we're saying is dress modestly for now. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. The reason I say this, go back to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sayings. He says, خَيْرٌ nasi قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best of generations is mine, and then the next, and then the next. That hadith shows us that there is a downward movement when it comes to goodness. People are losing track of goodness. Take a look at how highly educated we are on the globe today. We have PhD. Ds. That did not exist a hundred years ago. The word doctorate or BA did not exist a hundred years ago, perhaps. But as highly educated as we are, we're killing each other. We have become intolerant. We do not respect each other. We have absolutely no time for each other. We are so impatient. We are the ones who are right. We are the only ones who are right. Anyone who doesn't think exactly the way we do, we will fight them and perhaps eradicate them. That's become the thinking of a growing number of people on the globe. And I think you would agree. That's not Islam. That's not any other faith that is heavenly. That is Satanism. Those are people who are following their will and fancies. Those are people who are doing as they please. They have nobody to tell them anything. They think that they are the bosses of the globe and that is attitude. That's what it is. So what I'd like you to think about, do not become a person who has attitude. Attitude meaning you don't want to listen to anyone. No one can tell you anything. What you think is right is the only thing that's right without entertaining discussion whatsoever. No. Listen to those who are older than you. Listen to your parents. Listen to your teachers. Listen to those who have succeeded in life. See how they have succeeded. And be careful of the traps. What are the traps? The traps are people who hate you but pretend to like you. So they tell you things that seem to make sense to you but leading you straight to the hellfire. Leading you to a pit. When we say hellfire, we're not just talking about Jahannam in the afterlife. We're talking about hellfire here in this world. You lose. Take a look at this, the problem of drugs today. Wallahi, thank Allah if you're living in a country that is very, very strict in this regard. Because others are suffering, struggling. Believe me, it is difficult to send your child to a school because you don't know what their friends would do to them. And you know, the issue of peer pressure is so grand, it's so big, that sometimes a good child tends to fall to peer pressure and do something they know is wrong solely because they want to be seen to be cool or they want to be seen to be accepted by others. And this is extremely dangerous. So be careful in this regard. Remember to be upright, to stand up for good morals, values, and don't let the downward trend and those who are trying to remove, you know, morality and goodness, don't let that affect you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. I've seen and I've seen a lot and I've seen people fall. I'm actually a counselor. I speak to people, young and old, and I try to help them as best as I can. The biggest problems we have are problems of pornography, problem of the problem of uh, drugs, the problem of clubbing, this party mentality where young people are made to believe that life is all about enjoying the weekends and you know, getting yourself into uh, what would seem trouble being the cool thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And when parents or teachers or people like myself happen to say things of this nature, everyone says, ah, the guy's living in the 60s, man. He's living in the 60s. He doesn't know what's going on today. Technology, technology. That technology can make you or break you. Remember this. We've always said this. You know, I'm on Twitter myself and I'm on Facebook as well. But take a look at how it's used. How do we use it? How do I use it? For example, I'm not saying it's ideal, but I try my best to give an example to those who want to follow. Say, you want to use it? Use it responsibly. Make use of technology. You know, reach the sky. And for me, the sky is not the limit. It's too close. We need to go beyond the sky. But remember to be responsible. And remember, it's only with dedication that you'll be able to achieve. Do not let distractions make you lose focus upon your goal or from your goal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. You've got such a beautiful school. So beautiful, wallahi. And I'm just seeing all the faces here beaming, mashallah. Just looking at me, subhanallah. Amazing. And I've got so much to say. But you know what? 
They say cough mixture cannot be drunk the whole bottle. You've got to drink five mils at a time, ten mils perhaps. So perhaps we will just give you ten mils and you might think, oh, he left out this and he left out that. Yes, I did, because there will be another ten mils to follow a little bit later, inshallah. So my children, really, I'm so happy to be here. I want to encourage you to be upright. Help each other to be focused. Help each other to understand what life is all about. I cannot answer you in five or ten minutes. I cannot tell you what life is all about. But you need to search. You need to continue. I'm sure you've lost colleagues at this school who may have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannah. Those who've passed on perhaps. And you ask yourself, but that child was a bright child. That child was intelligent. That child was from a wealthy home. That child was this and that. But we didn't learn the lesson. What about me? I could be the next one to go. Is there anything that tells me no? Nothing. That doesn't mean I must become depressed and sad. I need to have hope in my maker. He made me. He will take me to paradise by his will and his mercy. But at the same time, I need to make sure that I don't waste the few moments that I have in this world. I was reading what Steve Jobs said. And somebody sent it to me two days ago. In fact, I read, read it on someone's Facebook wall. What Steve Jobs was saying that the minute I realize that, and the minute a human being realizes that, they're going to die. Everything becomes irrelevant. You start focusing on what you are really going to leave behind. But the minute we think we're going to live forever, that is the very minute we start dropping. And that is the very minute we start losing focus. And we start doing things that are really detrimental to our afterlife. And guess what? If something is detrimental to your afterlife, it has to be detrimental for this life too. Let me give you some examples. Okay, without taking names because we don't want to name people. But I'm sure you know of people who have led a life of, say, promiscuity. Those who've not been faithful in marriage. You know, whether they are sportsmen, whether they are top, uh, you know, famous people across the globe and so on. I'm sure you know of a lot of these people who've done things. To be honest with you, a lot of them are depressed. They might seem to have enjoyed for a while, but they lead a life of depression. I've actually studied the lives of so many of the so-called heroes and I mean heroes and heroines. To be honest, a lot of them need pills in order to sleep. It's a, it's a sad reality. The reason is they just do what they want and they think I've got the money, I've got the ability, I've got the looks, I've got the fame, I've got everything. No discipline. They cannot control themselves. And those who sleep like logs are those who have disciplined themselves and they have a relationship with their maker. They can sleep very well, even if they don't have food and drink. How many times have we learned of examples of people who, and I've seen it in Africa so much, homeless people sleeping under a tree, such that when the cars and trucks pass by in the morning, they don't even wake up. I'm sure you've seen it in India as well. I have, subhanAllah. And I'm sure you've heard about it at least. Why? Have you ever answered yourself why? They are happy. They have not stolen from anyone. They have not cheated people. They have not deceived. They owe nobody anything. They actually have such a clean life that they are sleeping. The only thing is they materialistically do not have something or a bedding to sleep in. But those who do have the most comfortable bedding sometimes are tossing and turning from side to side because they've cheated, they've deceived, they've done that which is wrong. They don't have a relationship with their maker and so on. Choose where would you like to be? We would like to be in the middle. Do you know what that means? We have a bedding, we have something good, alhamdulillah, and at the same time, we can sleep. And how would you achieve that? By marrying the two, by understanding that and I must not cheat and deceive. And inshallah, even if I have wealth and goodness, you know, for you to be at this school at this time is a very, very big blessing. Such a big blessing. But do you realize that? Use your time in the school to be constructive to be productive there will come a day when you won't be at the school anymore we all left our colleges and universities and believe me a good student is he who regrets later on as good as they were they feel we could have done much better that's a good student i'm sure all of us those who've left even your teachers will tell you i could have done better my days could have actually moved much better that is success and this means the person really feels, at least today, I feel I could have done better. So now let me make the most of where I am today. Because it's easy for me to say I could have done better from the days I was at school. But it will be very difficult for me to say I could have done better after I die. Very difficult. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. May He grant you strength. May He open your doors. And as I say, think, use your mind. Don't just follow the trends. Don't just follow trends and you know 
the movies that we have today, wallahi, even those who are acting are just acting. You need to know that. We tend to forget. You know, I, I, I want to say something on a lighter note, perhaps more for the sisters, but even for the brothers. You know, a lot of the people have this notion that I need to be similar to the actress there on the TV. It happens because of the pressure and because of what's going on. So it becomes the trend and the in thing. So now I've learned that, you know what? You cannot be, listen carefully, you cannot be like the girl on the TV because even the girl on the TV is not like the girl on the TV. Allahu Akbar, have you understood that? Herself, she's acting. Herself, she doesn't have the beautiful life she pre she's pretending to have. But you're busy running behind the fake life that she's portraying for you to have watched for two, three hours on a beautiful Bollywood movie. May Allah safeguard us. And you know how it ends? May Allah grant us ease. And that's not real life. That's just a movie. You don't need to let the movie dictate how you're going to lead your life. So everyone starts dressing in that way. Well, I tell you, the problems they face in real life are the same problems you would face. But do you know them? The answer is no. This is why we say use your mind. You know, when I had, and some of you might have heard if you're into a few of my lectures, we had a civvies day. Do you know what's a civvies day? A civvies day is like a plain clothes day. In the US, they call it a mufti day. Do you know that? Where you wear your own clothes. You can check it. It's not just because they call me Mufti. That's why I'm saying that. It's a fact. Mufti day meaning you can wear your own clothes. You don't need to wear a uniform. And perhaps you pay a fine or you pay a dollar or something, you know. So when we had that at our school once, and I remember I used to go dressed like this, as you see me today, right? From a young age. And I went into this school, and this is a school, mashallah, top school in the country. And uh, the teacher, the English teacher tells me, I can tell you something about yourself. And I said, what? She says, you don't have a TV at home. I said, yes, I don't. I said, but how do you know? She says, because you are the only one here who is original. Ouch. I didn't understand. Everyone else came dressed like this and like that. And I was just myself. And I came in my, you know, they call it a kandura in Dubai. I don't know. They call it a, a thawb or whatever, right? So, subhanallah, I looked at her. Now I understand what she's saying. It's true, you know. I didn't think twice because myself and my, my friends and so on, we all dressed in a similar way. I mixed with those who thought like me and I actually interacted with those who thought differently in order to learn and in order to understand what life is all about. But they were not my best of friends. I didn't really have to change my mind because I had a disciplined upbringing back at home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah grant us ease. You've had 11 mils, I think, instead of 10 of the cough mixture. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me. I, I've got so much more to say, but I think time is not on our side. I've spoken for exactly 17 minutes and 54 seconds. So inshallah, I'll, I'll close up now. And I think the brothers had requested if we can have a q and I wouldn't mind at all, inshallah. Uh, bearing in mind your timing, I don't want to eat up the time that you need to go back to the classroom or to whatever activities you have been. But before I end, alhamdulillah, very nice to have been here. And I'm sure I may have interacted with some of you online or Facebook or Twitter or somewhere. And I request that you pray for me as well. I'm just a human being like you, trying to make a difference in my own life and the lives of others. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum.